There was this video back in the day by Jenna Marbles, I believe. If you know her, you know her, called How to Trick People Into Thinking You're Good Looking. Now, I am not about to tell you how to trick people into thinking you're good looking, but kind of, I am. The reason I'm making this podcast is because a lot of people talk to me about the fact that, oh, it's easy enough for you to say, it's fair enough for you to say the fact that, oh, you know, men should treat you like this, or you should have that treatment, this treatment, he should pay, he should do this, that, and the other, when you look a certain way. To me, I'll be fair, I look deeply average. Let me just check, because I have not even checked what I look like. For those of you who listen to this as opposed to watching it, okay, I look human, barely human. Those of you who listen to this as opposed to watching it, good on you. For those of you who like to watch, it's also on YouTube. Also, if you don't know, you now know my book, The New Rules, is out to pre-order. Check it out in my description box or wherever you want to check it out. And remember to give this podcast, if you're a long-term listener, a review, five-star review. Let me know what you like about it. It helps it grow a lot. And if you haven't listened to this before and this is your first time, then wait until you review because I want it to be genuine. Anyway, a lot of people talk about the fact that you can only ask for these kind of high value woman requests if you have a certain look to you. And I'm not going to lie because I'm an honest type of gal. Our currency as women, especially as younger women, before we've developed wisdom and before we've developed self-knowledge and before we've developed style sometimes. Sometimes people have amazing style at 18, don't get me wrong. But as you grow, you swap youth for wisdom. And then you realize how powerful youth is, not only in terms of looks, but also in terms of just ability, being able to action stuff, being able to run around, being able to do this, that, or the other. It's really, really amazing. Whilst you then get wisdom, you know how to carry yourself, you know how to have good self-esteem, you know how to have all these things about you and with you and to you, okay? So you swap those out. However, there are ways to look amazing no matter what you look like because we're all human beings we have a certain set of you know body parts we have a certain way that we look we're all human we all present rather similarly but sometimes in culture a big butt is more fashionable than a small butt or a certain height is more fashionable than another height but culture changes and time changes however You can be the best looking you can be for yourself at a certain time. You can amplify how you look. There are several ways to do it. I'm going to go through them with you in this podcast. And the thing to remember most of all is this. I am not going to deny the fact that there is something to be said about how you look as a woman. We can deny it. We can pretend it doesn't exist. But if you amplify how you look as a woman, no matter what age you are, no matter what bracket you're in, you're just going to do better. You're going to be received better. And I don't know whether it's just to do with women, but it's also to do with men. Jordan Peterson often talks about how if you present yourself in a suit and you present yourself better, you will come across better. That's all it is. Everyone has the ability to present themselves in the best way possible. I'm going to share with you how I did it, how I I can manufacture a look, and I also can tell you how people can fall off that. Because to be honest, unless you are one of the 0.1% of people who are just naturally, ethereally good looking, and we know those people, they're often the supermodels of the world, the rest of us are kind of normal. We're kind of normal human beings, but we can Kylie Jenner ourselves. When I say that, I mean she is an average normal girl, and I mean that in the most beautiful way possible, just like the rest of us. But as they say, you are not ugly, you are just poor, you don't have money, but it's not about money. It's about amplifying your look. The reason I feel I have some kind of expertise to talk about this is because I grew up as a very deeply, deeply average child. I even used to get made fun of for how I look, like we all did. Do you know what I mean? We all got made fun of. We all know Billy at school or Jilly at school who like to make fun of people's looks. We all got made fun of, like, it's just what kids are. Kids are cruel. I'm more scared of kids walking past me on the street and saying something cruel that I'll never recover from, from the burn, than I am of, like, a grown man walking past me. Like, that intimidates me less than, than teenage children. Anyway, growing up, I was deeply average to the point of being made fun of. I had acne, I had extra weight, I had all that kind of teenage goodness that we all go through and that we love and that is fantastic. But 
I had a realization upon meeting a friend of my mum's. His name was David Douglas, who was a pageant coach. I didn't even know what pageant was at the time. He used to get girls ready for Miss Universe or Miss World. He, he, he had a job in fashion or something. I don't know what his job was. I was too young to care at the time. But he used to get girls ready for that, like get their gowns, get them walking right, get them approaching the whole pageant scene, right? And I met him and he was like, girl, this, that, and the other is so wrong about you if you want to compete in a pageant. Not that he was just being mean to me randomly, but just if I want to compete in a pageant. And it was back in the 2000s where like 2010, 2011, 12, 13, I can't remember, where you could say people's looks weren't up to par. Now you can't. I do understand that, but back then you could. And I was like, right, so how do I change it? He was like, you need to eat this way. You need to do this thing. You need to do that thing. You need to exercise like this and you need to do like this. I did those things. And let me tell you, on my mama, I was seen in the world differently. At the moment, I am writing a book. I am creating this podcast. I am looking after my two children. One is three months old, one is three years old. And I am not going to lie. I really want to look after my diet, but it is not always at the top of my to-do list because I have so many things that I want to do and need to do. That is where the sponsor of this podcast comes in. Thank you, Bacta. They make eating better easier. You guys know that I love ready-to-eat meals and things that make my life simple, but you also know, if you've watched my channel, that I love protein and keto to sustain my energy and make me feel good. These are amazing meals. They are fresh, they are dietitian approved, and they're ready to go in just two minutes. These are two minute meals, fuel up really fast. It's restaurant quality, basically. You can have anything from pancakes to smoothies and more. There's no prep, no fuss, no mess. They're flexible for your schedule. And it's a really good solution if you want to prioritize your diet, but you don't want to keep getting takeout and ordering takeout. So you can sign up and save head to factormeals.com slash beinger50 and use code beinger50 to get 50% off. That's a five zero fifty percent off. That's code beinger50, beinger50 at factormeals.com slash beinger50 to get 50% off. Give it a go, guys. Prioritize your health, prioritize your diet. Let's get back into the episode. I went from frumpy teen to Barbie. And I say Barbie in terms of like some kind of ideal of how people represent how they look because everyone's ideal is going to be different. Maybe, and this is the reason why I sometimes kind of like the Kardashians for women, they have very unapproachable ways that they look as in they've got plastic surgery, but it's obvious they've got plastic surgery. They're not exactly the tallest. They're not exactly the best looking in the world, but they've made the, mo- the most out of themselves. If the only idol we had was Barbie, who is can't even stand if she was real because her waist is so small to her feet ratio it would be really impossible to achieve this blonde blue-eyed Aryan look okay but we've got different idols at the moment and the whole point of what I'm trying to say is that if you want to compete out there even with the best version of who you used to be which is your only competition truly let it be known that is your only competition you just need to get better at these things do you think I've made a list of course I've made a list who do you think I am to come here without a list for you it is called how to look beautiful when you are average and isn't that the truth how to look beautiful when you're average I think and I will always say I'm a five out of 10. What that means for me is that I'm an average person, average human. People are like, oh my God, how could you say that? You're an eight, you're a nine, you're a 10. Cool. You think that, you know why you think that? Because you're my listener, because you are someone who subscribed to me. You see the beauty of like how I talk and how I act and my personality. If you just saw me on an average morning, I'm a five out of 10 average girl. I'm just average. Most of us are. And that's a really cool place to start from because sometimes let me tell you, I'm a two. And sometimes I'm an eight, depending on how I fashion it, okay? If you guys heard one of my recent episodes with Fatty15 founder Stephanie Van Watson, then you will know how excited I am about this essential fatty acid. The first one to be discovered in 90 years, C15. This thing is better and safer than omega-3, and it has incredible effects on your longevity and basically your youthfulness in the mitochondrial level. Now, I'm obsessed with it. If you heard the episode, you will know that it was discovered when the US Navy were working with the dolphins that they have in order to find out how the dolphins can preserve their lives and be healthier. 
and they found the C15 compound was way more pivotal than anything else that you could give the dolphins, and we are very much similar. It went through tests and trials, and now people are taking it and having incredible results. I have been on it for a few months, well, maybe a month and a half now, and I'm seeing incredible changes. I am feeling a lot better, joint health, everything. And I think they're very, very important, the essential fatty acids to you. The only ingredient in these is C15, and it is 100% pure. C15 works in multiple ways. It repairs the age-related damage to your cells, protects them from future breakdown, boosts mitochondrial energy output, and activates pathways in the body that regulate sleep, mood, natural repair mechanisms, and all of that good stuff. Anyway, Fatty15 is on a mission to replenish your C15 levels and restore your long-term health, guys. You can get an additional 15% off their 90-day subscription starter kit by going to fatty15.com slash beinghur and use code beinghur at the checkout. Enjoy, guys. Get those fatty acids. Let's get back to the episodes. So first things first, I had an email from somebody who said, I've always had short hair, like a pixie cut, but I've heard that men like long hair. Should I grow up my hair? I want to be a feminine woman. Is it feminine? Yada, 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 yada. And if you are Eastern European, you will know this, that after the age of about 30, every woman, for some some reason, peroxides their hair orange and cuts it short and thinks that's a fashion and a style, and it ages her by 500 years. You can also Google celebrities with long hair who are 50 plus with short hair on them. And you will see this incredible thing where Catherine Zeta Jones and Jennifer Lopez with short hair look like they've aged 25 years. It is uncanny. It's absolutely crazy. So my first rule is, if you're unsure, keep your hair long, no matter what nationality or race you are or what you look like. Keep it long, i.e. healthy, and close to its natural color with some highlights. That is how you're going to look the best for you if you are not sure. I know you want the funky haircut. I know, baby. I know you want the funky haircut. I know you want to look funky. I know you've had it in your head that you're going to cut this fringe and you're going to do this thing. But unless you're a Betty Boop kind of gal and you've got that style, you wouldn't even be watching this video if you're that type of girl because you know your style. You don't need advice from Margarita Nazarenko, okay? You wouldn't be listening to this podcast wondering how to amplify your looks. You'd be like, I know that I have a straight, blunt haircut and I rock it, okay? Because then you're going to come across beautiful because you are going to be sure of how you look with that haircut. But for the rest of you, stop, stop overthinking it. Just wash your hair once a week like I do because then it doesn't go frizzy it doesn't you know go crazy invest in a really good shampoo when you use it or get a blow dry if you're somebody who makes money online or somebody who makes money while you work with your fingers on a computer and it takes you can make more money in that hour than you would blow drying your hair yourself get a blow dry in the salon and work in that hour you'll make more money than you spend and that's your blow dryer for the week that's what i do okay i didn't always used to do that but i do that now well actually now i've got a small baby daughter so i don't wash my hair at all but that's what i used to do get a good shampoo get a good hairstylist who knows your color make sure you're not burning your hair off don't box diet don't do all this crap Make your hair healthy, take the hair vitamins, because there are three things, hair, skin, and nails. You know those pills, hair, skin, and nails? Yeah, that's your clue as to what people see as good looking. Good looking is basically the healthiest you can be for you. So that's the healthiest weight, the healthiest hair, the healthiest skin, the healthiest nails, and the healthiest teeth, which moves us on to the next one. My friends, I had braces growing up, and then I got Invisalign as well. That is how important teeth are. And then I got them whitened. I've actually got a video on my YouTube channel. If you Google my name and then you Google teeth whitening, uh, you will see how I did it. I need to do it again after having two babies. But let me tell you, if you, Invisalign, when I got it, was like 15,000 or something stupid. Now it's much more affordable. If I was trying to be better looking and more confident in who I am and how I come across, I would shop at Target, wear the same t-shirts, wear the same pants, just crisp and clean, but I would go and invest in my teeth being straight and white and my hair being healthy. Good shampoo, good hairstylist, good hair, only short if you know your style, long otherwise, and looked after, and teeth, baby. 
white teeth that are straight stop looking at my teeth everyone who's watching this i do not need your judgment i need to go and whiten them again okay but that changes everything for you next okay high protein high fat diet i am not a dietitian i am not somebody who's going to tell you how to eat to lose weight but i will tell you one thing if you want to be the maximum of good lookingness for you you need to be at the correct weight for your body where you look lithe but strong and effective and active and that means high protein and that means high fat because when you have high fat you've got fat in your diet that can go to your hair skin and nails you've got that shine to you you've got that glow to you you've got that gloss to you we're not doing the low fat yoga anymore who does that i bought that the other day because somebody was like you can eat as much as you want of it low fat yogurt disgusting disgusting i don't like modified food why is it modified why is it modified like the closest to nature that you can get is what we should be having unless it's dangerous like you know pasteurized milk cool but why are we having fat removed from food that's supposed to have fats do you not think god designed it to have fats in it and for you to eat it look at this abundant planet it's crazy even if you don't believe in god you have to believe in the universe or some kind of creator or something that's made this and it's all made like that and you're there removing fat from yogurt you're there removing the yolk from the egg stop it get a life you have to put really good food into your body and stop focusing on the fact of like how skinny you look not skinny you look how this one that one the other one and start putting really good foods into your body and your body will thank you and you will look vital and healthy your eyes will be sparkly your tail will be bushy it'll be amazing sleep enough make it a priority and before you tell me you can't i'm a mother of a three month old and a three-year-old who keep constantly coming into my room and i'm not going to tell you how much sleep i got because i don't want to jinx myself but i prioritize it i force myself to go to bed at seven o'clock when they go to bed because unless i do you see she's waking up as i'm making this she might have to come into the podcast unless i do i know that my skin is going to look gray it's going to look dull it's going to look sallow it's going to look horrible i need my sleep and if that means less scrolling on instagram because i know that's what you're doing if you're not sleeping tell me what are you doing writing a dissertation when you're not sleeping what are you doing having your me time that's great baby but you're going to look ugly with your me time so go to sleep get your sleep in the spirit of self-love and looking after yourself, today's sponsor is One Skin. Thank you for sponsoring this podcast. They are here to simplify your skincare regimen. Founded by four PhDs dedicated to skin longevity, One Skin proves you don't need to complicate your skincare routine to achieve incredible results and stay younger looking and healthier for longer. One Skin's OS1 peptide is the first ingredient scientifically proven to reduce the buildup of what is known as zombie cells that contribute to skin aging. Fewer of those zombie cells means healthier, younger looking skin with fewer lines and wrinkles and reduced age spots. And it forms a stronger natural barrier basically for your skin. So I've been really enjoying those products. As you know, I'm on the longevity journey. My skin is thanking me for it. So I am very, very happy to be on that journey. I hope you can join too. For a limited time, our listeners will get an exclusive 15% off their first One Skin purchase using the code being her when you check out oneskin.co. Invest in health and longevity of your skin with One Skin. One Skin is more than skincare. It's about skin longevity, targeting the root cause of aging to help you look and feel younger and your best at every age. Get started today with 15% off using code being her at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code being her. After your purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. That'd be really nice. It's time to expect more from your skincare routine. Invest in the health of your skin with one skin. Next understand the lymph in the face lymphatic drainage you need to get a gua sha you need to put ice on your face you need to get rid of that lymph that is stuck in your body it's the same for exercise when you exercise you move the lymph around your body and it drains and in your face i actually need to get on this more people who put fillers and botox in their face i love that for you i cannot wait to get some botox i haven't had it for years because of the babies but I cannot wait. It would be very exciting. Very cool. Love that for me. But lymphatic drainage. If you are swollen like a toad, there's no amount of Botox or filler that's going to make you look better. After you've fixed your diet, get that lymph moving. L Google, Google, lymphatic drainage, 
facial massage, boom. Oh my gosh, you get that lymph moving down your face. Mm -mm -mm. Next, stop wearing trends and wear classics. If you have a lot of money, invest in classic clothes and build your wardrobe, you are gonna look stunning if you're confused. Again, if you have a specific style that you really love and you feel very sexy in, go for that, that's your style. This is for the people who aren't sure. Classic style, classic style. That kind of Calvin Klein 90s classic style, that's the one. And if you've got little money, like I said, Target, T-shirt, you know, pants, black tailored pants, People make such affordable classic clothes that you are going to look more good looking. Is that even a right turn of phrase? Does that, is, am I Englishing at the moment? Doesn't matter. If you're not distracting with, okay, Coco Chanel said this, before you go out of the house, look in the mirror and take off one piece of jewelry, okay? Because you already look like a Christmas tree. She didn't say the Christmas tree part. I'm saying the Christmas tree part. Just more simple, more classic, let your skin shine, let your eyes shine, keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid, okay, kiss, posture and movement, I had video on my YouTube channel about how to fool people into thinking you're hot, it's posture and movement, spread your shoulders open, sit with some kind of pride in your posture, sit in a feminine way, move with fluidity, flip your hair, be more feminine, stop, stop moving around like that red guy from that movie where the emotions are in the girl's head, inside out, is that the movie? I can't remember. You're moving like a refrigerator, that's what you're moving like, like a brick, like I could build a house with you. Have some fluidity to your body, the whole idea of femininity isn't skinny or fat, or tall or short, it's fluidity and movement. I'm talking to myself as I'm saying this. This is how to fool people into thinking that you're a good-looking, enigmatic, sexy cat, when in reality you're just an average dog, okay? Don't consume processed food or drinks. Oh my God, I love a Diet Coke. Do I have a Diet Coke in my fridge? I hope I do. I hope my nutritionist isn't listening to this. I signed up for a nutritionist and she's amazing. I'll recommend her to you when I'm done because I wanna see how I feel first, okay? Because otherwise I'm a keto girly until I die. But listen. Don't consume processed food or drinks. I'm trying so hard to get off the Diet Coke. When I looked the best that I looked ever in my life is when I understood that the depth of my beauty and how I look and how I present myself presides on how I feel I should treat myself. It is disgusting to drink Coca-Cola, she said, waiting to see if there's a Coke in her fridge, when you know that that stuff can basically bleach your toilet like honestly if you have something that you need removed put coke there let it stand there and it will literally descale your pipes okay that's how powerful that stuff is in terms of descaling and you're putting that in your body margarita you are disgusting i cannot with you okay you are about what you eat so stop eating the processed food eat real food eat real things invest in a skincare routine and sunscreen i'm not going to go on about water and sunscreen you hear it on every other podcast water 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 sunscreen 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 if you're in america bottled water apparently i haven't done my research into this but fluoride makes you stupid so they say so there you go you uh, need to then buy bottled water i guess but do your research on that i am not the authority on that i have no idea but whatever water you can get, drink that water, okay? And a skincare routine. Find out the basics of skincare. Watch some experts on skincare. Find out the basics and do the basics. Look after your skin. Because when it's... I heard that people either run dry and crusty or inflamed and... Not crusty, like dry and crepey. Or inflamed and, you know, fluid retentive. I'm more inflamed and fluid retentive. So I like the lymphatic drainage. If you're creepy and wrinkly, cream, 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 okay? You need to find out what your face is like. Go to a dermatologist. Find out what you're doing. Research because it's, it's, it's much easier to keep your skin the way it is and, you know, look after it as opposed to letting it creep in the sun and then trying to reverse it. Reversal is really hard. Next, do Pilates and yoga. People who do yoga and Pilates, number one, have a meditative centered approach to life. They look like they are lean because it's almost like there's a string attached to the center of the top of their head that is floating up to the sky and is aligning their spine. They have this like 
stance that is beautiful they have uh, a way that they move through the world their body is aligned and supple you can also lift weights you can do whatever you want you can run you can jog do whatever you want but take up pilates or yoga you need to align your body in a way that is going to make you look beautiful dancers look beautiful when they move so i'm not going to try and tell you to become a, a ballerina okay but i will say yoga and pilates because this muscle squeezed a bit on the side the muscle's a bit loose on the right uh, da, 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 and now you're moving like a prawn because it's pulling in on this way and it's too extended on that way and you're moving around this world like a prawn wondering why you're not the best looking that you can be okay that's the pilates and yoga piece i wrote no sugar because it equals inflammation look up to you yeah but if you're feeling inflamed and you're feeling hideous, cut the sugar. Last but not least, if all else fails and you're still sitting there and you're not feeling the best you can feel, there are services, there are doctors who can help you. There is no shame in that. Do your research. Go to the best person. I have not partaken in this in life yet. The only surgery I've had is on my foot because my ligament snapped. I would have liked it to be for beautification purposes, but let it be known that I'm aiming to age disgracefully and not gracefully. And it is what it is. So if you're still not happy, don't let it get you down. Get it addressed. There are so many ways about it. If you don't like your nose, don't like your this, don't like your that. If you don't like your nose and you can't see the beauty of your heritage in it, of your ethnic uh me i've got a long nose i'm eastern european that's a feature of a lot of eastern european noses it's either long or it's a potato that's the noses we have okay if i can't embrace that then i should go and fix it but if you can embrace it if you can sit with yourself and be like this is the nose of my ancestors and they all got me here the likelihood that they fought off all the mammoths all the plagues all the diseases all the cold all the hot, all the savannah, all the Sahara to be here for me to complain about my nose. Understand this. Love that nose. And if you can't, then love yourself enough to fix it. And that is how to trick people into thinking you're good looking when actually you're average. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Leave a review. Subscribe. Be a real one. I appreciate it. And pre-order the book so that I can write another one. Ciao, ciao. Love you lots like jelly tots.